Welcome back to more Money Minutes for Doctors. This is episode number 25, where we're going to be talking about physical and financial health. I'm Catherine Vesnes, the CEO and founder of MD Financial Advisors. Welcome and happy new year. It's that time of year again, when we all sit down and look at what's been happening over the last year and try to set new goals for the upcoming year. We're trying to create new habits and break bad ones. And two of the most common New Year's resolutions are living healthier and saving more money. And these two are much more alike than you think. All right, so many of our doctors know a lot about creating and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. After all, that's your profession. What we found is that creating and maintaining financial health is very, very similar. So let's start with six major ways that you can think about changing your financial health in this upcoming year. Number one, set a clear goal. So having a goal for a healthier lifestyle, whether it's reaching a certain weight or maintaining muscle mass or maybe running a marathon are really important. After all, the first thing a personal trainer is gonna ask you is what are your long-term goals? These help measure your progress and let you know that you're actually taking steps forward. And it keeps your mindset on the larger picture for the days when going to the gym or skipping that burger and fries seems impossible. And then you know the exact same thing is true of your financial health. So think about financial freedom. What does this actually look like to you? Do you have an age in mind? And take a minute to just dream and kind of picture what you'd like that ideal future to be. And then, you know, we're in the numbers business. I always like to convert that into a number. And for most of our doctors in today's dollars, in other words, if they were retiring today, they'd need somewhere between $4 million and $7 million. I know that's a lot of money. And by the way, by the time you retire, if you're retiring in 30 years, that number is going to be even larger due to inflation. So every decision that you make between now and then is either going to get that target of financial freedom closer or it's going to push it out. So we have clients who like to see their dial at every meeting. Remember that dial is something our software does where it gives you what we call the percentage or the probability of success. The dial tells you what percentage of the time you're going to meet your goals and have some money left over at the end. And our clients find that very, very encouraging because they want to keep moving that needle on the dial where they're getting closer and closer to financial freedom. All right, number two, make a plan. Now that we've got a clear goal, we need a plan for getting there. Now, this might be meal planning for the week. It might be setting a workout routine when you're thinking about your health. Uh, might be setting aside 10 minutes a day for meditation. But when it comes to money, there's a couple of things that we think about when it comes to making a plan. One is having a clear picture of where your expenses are going, which we'll be talking about in just a minute. But another is a savings and investment plan for the year. So here's some of the things I'd like you to be thinking about. Can you maximize your 401k or 403b at the office? If you can, that's fantastic. You want to do that. Uh, another thing is, uh, assuming that's still going to be allowed by the time we're listening to this, is can we do backdoor Roth IRAs? At the time that I'm actually cutting this video, um, it's up in the air because Congress is talking about taking them away. Let's hope they're still here. And if they are, that's something that you want to put into your plan for the year, if that makes sense. Um, other things you may want to think about is how much do you want to contribute to your brokerage account every single month? That's always best done on automatic pilot. Have it taken out at the first of the month. You probably won't miss it. So that's making a plan and getting it in writing. The easiest way to prioritize savings we found is not so much about going in and checking your budget every month. I'll be frank, I don't do that for myself. And most of our clients find that very tedious. But the best way to prioritize savings is just putting it on automatic pilot. As I mentioned, we just had that first check coming out of your account after payday goes right into your savings and investment accounts. That way you're paying yourself first and anything that's left over, you should feel free to spend. Have fun with that money. You've worked really, really hard for it. All right, number three, start slow. 
Now you never start training for a marathon by running 26 miles on day one, and you won't become a millionaire and debt free on day one either, but you can get on the path for reaching your goals. Now, we always like to start savings with an amount that you feel is sustainable and maintainable. So yes, when we crunch the numbers for you, maybe an ideal plan for you is that you're saving 5,000 a month in your brokerage account. For some clients, it might be even eight or 10. Very often that's not doable, right? You've got kids maybe, or you've got uh, medical school debts. You've got other things that are gonna be taking priority first. So we wanna start with what's doable. We need a doable plan for you. And then every few months, we're gonna take a look at that and see if we can increase it by three to 5%. And once again, I find most of our doctors don't notice the money is missing. This happened early on with one of our doctors. She's lovely, her patients adore her. Uh, money wasn't her thing. Numbers, just not her bailiwick. So I got her saving, I don't remember now, I think it was maybe 750 a month. And then a couple months later, we raised it to 1,000 and then we raised it to 1,500 and we raised it to about 2,000. And you know what? She, I know she never missed it. And the reason is later she came to me and says, I can't believe there's so much money in my investment accounts because I'm only saving 750 a month. I said, no, no, no. We started at 750, you're now up to about 2,000. Once again, she had never even missed it. And I think there's something that happens on a subconscious level here. When you pay yourself first, it's like the rest of the expenses stay within your budget automatically that month. It's like your subconscious knows how much you've got to, to work with. Now, a couple of other things you can do to start slow is making a plan to bring your lunch from home. Yes, I know. Some of you are like, no, no. And you know what? If you get uh, compensated with free lunches at the hospital, no problem. You can skip this step. But for me, pretty much every week, I spend part of Sundays, not long, making all of my lunches for the week. It's incredibly rare that I actually eat out. I feel like it not only saves me time, but it also saves me money. And I know I'm just eating really, really healthy. So think about taking your lunch. And if you do like going out to eat with your friends in the evenings or whatever, think about having maybe some uh, fun nights with your friends where you invite them over, play games, watch movies, do other things instead of an expensive eating out. Or if you are eating out, try to avoid the drinks and the desserts. These are very high price, I should say high profit items for the restaurants. So a few tips that you can save a little money there. Number four, we always want to track your progress. You know, whether it's a physical goal or a financial goal, we want to see how you're doing. So this might be tracking your steps or your calorie intake, uh, if that's something that you're doing on the physical health side. But on the financial health side, we want to take a look at, once again, where is the money going and does it match the budget? We actually found that people who track their spending in one study, spent 17% less. Now think about that. If you're making 300,000 a year, maybe you're taking home 200,000 after taxes, then a 17% spending less is a whopping 34,000 a year. Now, wouldn't you like to be adding an additional 34,000 to your investments or maybe your kid's college fund? So the good news is with our clients, the software we provide for you does this for you so it doesn't have to be labor intensive. Um, if you're not one of our clients, you might wanna consider one of the online apps like Mint to once again, track that spending, making it easy for you and then checking it periodically. It can be a huge, huge surprise. Now, number five, think about having an accountability partner. I know this is really important for me when I'm working with a nutritionist, it's somebody I've got to check in with let them know how I'm doing. I think this is where your financial advisor can really help you keep on track and help co coach you over the tough spots. And it's always easier when you've got somebody that you've got to report to who's got some experience and can tell you how you can get through those areas that you're having some trouble with. Um, maybe that's you feel like you're spending too much money and you need some help there. Or very often we have clients where one's a saver and the other's a spender. And we like to sit down with, with both partners and kind of come to some happy medium so that they're both very happy with it, where their finances are going. 
So this is a really big part of our job is really being a financial coach. And a very typical things we just want to ask is, how are you doing? How is this working for you? Do you feel like those savings goals are, are okay? Are they doable for you now? And, and by the way, do you think you can increase them a little bit? Because that's going to help you get to financial independence that much sooner. We also want to know what their roadblocks are. And pretty much there's not a roadblock we haven't seen that we can figure out a way around. So once again, work with your financial advisor. That's why they're there. Number six, be realistic. Now, most long-term fitness plans come with cheat days or rest days between workouts. Now, the same idea, I think, applies to savings. I mean, while working towards those big goals like financial independence, we don't expect our doctors to pass up on everything just because it costs a significant amount of money. We recommend some fun money accounts. And you know what? I want you to have fun and I want you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You have worked really hard to get where you're at. You've put in a lot of hours and it's cost you a lot to get your education. I want you to enjoy all of that. So one of the things we like to do for clients is set up a fun money account. Sometimes I call this the mad money account, go mad spending it. And these are extra accounts for clients where they can set aside, maybe it's vacation money or new furniture for their living room. Um, maybe it's a new car or you know, even a vacation place. It's something that you don't have to have, but it's something that you'd really like to have because you think it would enrich your life. I'm all in favor of that. I just don't want that to sabotage your investment goals. So let's have a special account. And when there's money in there and you want to take the family back to the, their homeland, in my case, it'd be Germany, my husband would be Greece. Great. If there's money in that account, take the trip, enjoy it. If there's not money, then wait a few more months until there is, and then you can take it without worrying that it's going to sabotage your savings and investment plans. I also think the fun money account can help you avoid credit card loans. Sometimes it's tempting to get that living room furniture and then finance it. But this way, if you've got that account, you can pay cash and not have to worry about incurring any debt. All right, in conclusion, just like you need to eat your calories, a certain number of calories based upon your workout and diet plan, your financial goals are pretty much the same thing. I cannot eat everything I want and look and feel the way I want. If I did, I'd probably weigh 300 pounds. And the same thing with our doctors. Yes, you make a lot of money, but it's not an infinite amount of money. And we have to put your spending on a budget too to make sure that you can reach those goals that you had in mind for this year. So remember, your future self is going to be very grateful to you for the actions you take today because they're going to help you get closer to your goal of financial independence. For further questions, or if there's something you'd like us to cover in a future episode, please, please reach out to us at info at mdfinancialadvisors.com. And please don't forget to like us, subscribe, follow us on social media at MD Financial. And I recently read some of the lovely reviews that you've left for us. I so appreciate them. Thank you for those very, very kind words. <music>